Welcome to Indiana Sports Beat Radio, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni! Fires upfield into the end zone, and it's caught! Jelani Woods! Touchdown! I-N-D-Y! A 43-point night for Tyrese Halliburton! How do you like that, buddy? Galloway drives all the way to the hole, throws it up, got it! And Indiana's got their first lead of this contest. It's pretty simple, I win. Google me. Now, here's your host, Jim Coyle. Welcome aboard, Indiana Sports Beat fans. Hope you're uh, having a great week and ready for the weekend. Welcome to this Friday edition. Indiana Sports Beat Radio, Jim Coyle with you as always. And uh, looking forward to it, Bob Kravitz. Looking forward to talking to him, Bob. Zach Osterman will join us. And Todd Leary, um, in lieu of a late postgame show last night, will be with us today as well to talk about tonight. Last night's uh, Indiana win over Penn State, stopping a four-game skid there. And uh, tonight's game coming up with Nebraska, in which they can stop a two-game skid also. Uh, A winnable game for Indiana, to be honest with you. But we'll talk about all that, and there's plenty more to get to as well. Uh, Don't forget, Indiana Sports Beat Radio, powered by Andy Moore Honda. Just go to andymorehonda.com and get more to your door in the best and new and used vehicles. And Hoosier Hanks East, where uh, normally you can find us for the post-game show, except for those that end too damn late, uh, like that game last night. There was uh, well, guess what though, Jimbo. Uh, yes, tonight's sir. game is also going to end too damn late. Indiana, the late matchup again is their their tentative schedule is for nine p.m., which, as we all know, last night's was eight thirty, started at nine. This one will likely start nine or nine, more likely nine thirty. I would guess. Well, and that sucks, but the difference is it's a Friday night. That is true. That is so true. So that makes a, a difference for us. We will make accommodations um, for that, regardless, just because it's Friday night and uh, we're not having, we're not worrying about having to get up early in the, the next day and go to work and all that biz, biz at. Uh, so we will do that. But uh, Todd will be with us here on uh, this morning to talk about last night's game and tonight's game coming up, which. I got to be honest with you. I think they stand as good a chance to win tonight as they did last night. Uh, Nebraska is not that. That's the that's the Big Ten this year. While Nebraska is the, are they the three seed? I think. Yeah, yeah, they, they have the three. They're the three because Indiana's the six, right? Yes, sir. So far, the entire Big Ten tournament has gone chalk except for one game. And that was Ohio State versus Iowa yesterday. And how about that? Uh, the Buckeyes, 6-1 and one now under uh, Diebler. How, there, there's no way you don't give him the job. And he's already politicking for it. I heard him talk. He goes, oh, oh boy. This, they're asking. Well, he does want that, it. Of course. Well, who well, not, and not that? that he wouldn't. Yeah, it's an unexpected opportunity to become a head coach and not only become a head coach, but in the Big Ten. So, uh, yeah, there's no doubt that he wants it. And he is making as good an argument for it as anybody possible. Six and one they've gone under him with a win over Purdue. Uh, Get a win in the Big Ten tournament. You show it's no fluke. Um, You know what? He's kind of like... He's becoming like Kurt Signetti and uh, my man Hank here on this shirt. I win. Google me. <laughs> I uh, will say though, there's not a there's not really a good history of of teams that become the interim that eventually become the permanent head coach. Um, but maybe Diebler's the exception. Maybe he is because Rodney. You mean Terry after from Texas? You mean yeah, after, after the fact? I might not have explained that very well. Rodney Terry at Texas is kind of an example. They didn't have a horrible season this year, but they they definitely were a drop off when compared to where Chris Beard was taking them. Um, but who knows? Maybe Diebler is maybe Diebler is the guy for Ohio State. So bad. Yeah, and then the guy at Texas Tech, he didn't last long either. 
Yeah, uh, and I don't remember who that was, unfortunately. I, he was the most unlikeliest of looking at – he did not look like a basketball coach. Um, not that that has anything to do with it. But uh, Philip pointing out that, yes, Chris Holtman was not long for a job after being fired by Ohio State. DePaul has uh, r- rolled the dice on him and already hired him. That is what's – Funny, all of these these job openings that we're talking about, potential candidates and this and that. There's, I, I see a lot of guys that are already re-upping. Uh, Chris Beard has been re-upped. Uh, who else was I? Did I see yesterday that they they locked up? But uh, some of these guys are being locked up uh, contract wise now. These schools see that these opportunities are out there and they're like, whoa, hold on. Uh, so I, I think this is going to be a seller's market for coaches, which means they're going to teams like Louisville, uh, Ohio state. If they, that's another reason why Ohio state, I think will hire Diebler. Um, the options are, are starting to thin out already, even though it seems like, more coaches get fired every day, which that will probably continue to be the case as uh, conference tournaments end. But it's it's going to be interesting. Um, any any news uh, in in Louisville in regards to their search? Nothing new in regards to you know having a lead on who might be the head coach. There were rumors yesterday that Josh Hurd, who is Louisville's athletic director, spoke with. Indiana State head coach Josh Shirts. I know, kind of funny. Josh Shirts and Josh Hurts sound very similar. Hey, let me tell um, you the bargain that dude is, man. Again, three hundred fifty-six thousand dollars a year is what his salary is. Yeah, I mean, it's it would ludicrous. be a very, it would be a very high value pick potentially for Louisville. Um, one other uh, thing that Jeff Goodman put out yesterday is he thinks that. Dusty May is going to have yeah. his choice between Ohio State and Louisville this year. Well, you know but what? That's again, like what saying I, that's like saying I, uh, Jim Coyle's at Kroger and he has his choice between chocolate milk and white milk. Yeah, uh, what's well, your point? <laughs> of course, he has his choice if he were to want it. But well, yeah, of course. I, I, I think don't Goodman think... is assuming that he wants to get out of FAU, which I mean, I guess there's no way to know that for sure unless he's speaking directly with him, right? And um, I don't see Dusty May taking the Louisville job, but again, that, I don't know. This is my opinion. I do not either. It wouldn't um, surprise me if he took the Ohio State job, but if Jake Diebler keeps doing what he's doing, then that that keeps him from taking that job. But yep. again, I said this before, and I don't know how – I don't, obviously, I'm not in the know. I'm just saying based on what I'm seeing elsewhere, I guess. But then I wouldn't be surprised, and I know you disagree with me on this, Jim, is I wouldn't be surprised if Dusty May took the West Virginia job. Have you been to West Virginia? I, I know that's what you always say. Like, I know Morgantown is not really the place to be, but I mean, you are in the Big 12. You are in the best conference in college basketball, at least as of right now. And um, I mean, if if he wants to go elsewhere, that may be the option that he takes. Again, I don't know anything, obviously. I'm just speculating. I'm right there with you. Uh, I'm guesstimating. Uh, yeah, it's on this situation. It is... You never know what's in a guy's mind. They, I, I say that I, I can't see Dusty May going to West Virginia, but tomorrow they may announce him as the new head coach. If an offer comes that's just too good to pass up, uh, if you see that as a route you want to go, like John mentioned, uh, getting into the Big 12 Conference, a, uh, a a good but tough conference, that's a tough conference. Hell, it's tougher than the Big 10 to win in, though. Uh, or... Louisville is a, a path to the ACC. It's if he wants to move. I, I'm just not sure. He he knows for one thing, and I'm not saying that he would get it or should get it. Uh, Robert, the truth, if you're listening, 
I, I'm I'm not pushing for it. I'm just saying. But um, if he might just wait for the Indiana job. And that very and, well could be the case. Because if, if he were to sit at because he can. for one more season – that would that would almost give all indication that he's waiting for the Indiana job. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if that's the case. Um, well, certainly, and I will say out. if he does take another job, you can almost guarantee that whoever ends up hiring is going to make sure that the buyout for Indiana specifically is a lot more difficult for them to achieve than the average school. I agree. Uh, I agree, man. Got a great show today. Um, looking forward to Todd being on with us. Casey Bartley from Boiler Upload as Purdue gets into action for the first time tonight uh, as the Big Ten gets down to finally to the quarterfinals. Uh, it was talking about what do you call yesterday? I think it's just the second round is all you can call it, right? Yeah, that th they just refer to it as the second round. But... Uh, now it's down to the final eight teams, quarterfinals. Indiana taking on Nebraska. Michigan State wins yesterday. Um, Maryland pulls out the win over Rutgers. Not an upset. I, I just thought that I, I picked Rutgers in that just because of the defense that they had been playing. But that obviously did not matter. Um Get this tournament schedule pulled up. Wisconsin, I know. I think I think I know where you're going. Wisconsin throttled Maryland yesterday in their matchup, beating by 31 points. We're up by nearly yeah, one point. Wisconsin was draining the three point shots, um, and it just shows you how quickly a day turns. One thing after last night's game, and everybody gets to put their team sticker on the tournament thing. Anthony Leal who hits the game-winning shot, how about that? He starts to put it where the champions is as a joke. And so, <laughs> um, foreshadowing? Uh, who knows? But how about Anthony Leal? There's a feel-good story for you. How can yep. you not, uh, not feel good for uh, Anthony Leal, a, a four-year guy who the consummate teammate, always there, waiting uh, biding his time. Do you know, this is an amazing stat, and someone challenged me on this last night. Um, do you know how many minutes he played last night? I don't know how many he played. It's like 24 minutes. Do you know how many minutes he played last year? It's probably close to that exact number, isn't it? 23 minutes. Wow. And uh, I sent out a tweet that said... Uh, Penn State wishes he played 23 minutes in this game because he, he did the most damage in his last minute with that put-back uh, bucket that gave Indiana the win with five seconds to go. Uh, a, a game in which they start out hot. Uh, I shouldn't say hot. Penn State was awful. Uh, like five for their first 28 Field goal one attempts. for 11 for in the first like eight minutes. I remember seeing a stab. Well, it, it got worse. It just, they, they were hell. They had shot what 20% for the game. I think, um, it, it, it was just ugly. And I'm not going to, Indiana was kind of lucky because they weren't doing anything to light the world on fire. Although I tell, I tell you what though, I mean, not again, like you said, they didn't light the world on fire, but it was nice to see somebody like Gabe cups, Hit a couple of three pointers last night. He big. He didn't do a lot, but when he did it, it helped a a, a ton. Uh, he did. He hit a couple of three pointers, and, and that's the thing about that team. Getting they were they got what they needed. A little bit from here, a little bit from there, and uh, little things like that helped them move on last night. And uh, we've got plenty more to talk about. Is it's time to take a break. Bob Kravitz from BobKravitz.com is going to join us next. You think you'll get banned from TikTok? Um, did you see that? Congress looking at a TikTok ban. Oh, man. We'll find out. Hopefully they don't have a Bob Kravitz ban or a Jim Coyle ban. 
We're back with more. Brock Dubai. Who's your Hanks East? Google me. I win. Oh, that's my cue. All right. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the market. Sorry about that. That's no, you're good. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Kravitz. Good morning. How are you? We're doing fine on this rainy Friday. We had some hellacious storms roll through here last night. Oh, yeah, we boy. did. That's for sure. Worse yeah. up in your all's area than where I'm at, I believe. Yeah, we is it uh, just me or is Andy cats a putz? Oh, I don't <laughs> know. I mean, I, I know him. Ju- I, uh, why? I just think he's a putz. A putz. I don't think he really knows anything about the game. Oh, he's uh, hang on a sec. He's been covering it since Jerry Tarkanian and Fresno. Oh, I get it. Here, here. The one thing I'll say about Andy Katz, and it's not he's that an ass part. kisser. I'll tell you this: he's an it's, ass kisser. He shows a very Duplicate. obvious bias to the Big Ten. And well, I know he, he works should. For he works Sports. for the Big Ten. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I guess Fox and the Big Ten, but he. It's not even that he should, because I mean, even Mike DeCourcy, I don't feel like does it to the extent that that Andy Katz does. Well, no, he just he's a bootlicker. Oh <laughs> uh, well, he's he he was a hell of a journalist in his day when he was a writer. He was really good. He should have stuck to that. Maybe. Maybe I'm just being jealous. Maybe I Jim think. John Martinez wants a a bobblehead of you. You know what? Of jo- uh, of of Jim. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it reminds me of that commercial that uh, <laughs> that ESPN commercial. Oh yeah, it's when uh, what's his name does it. I think he's he he nails it. He just cracks me up. Oh mercy, Robert. What is your next column? Is it about the Big Ten tournament? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to, as soon as we're done, I'm going to write a short thing on the IU game last night. And uh, just, I'm just going to write blogs off each game. Blogs. Blog, 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 blog. Blogger boy. Isn't that a Dan Dockage thing? Oh, oh yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Yeah, blogger boy. <laughs> blogger uh, boy. Appar- apparently, he asked the other day if I was still alive. <laughs> hey, I got excluded from that blogger boy thing. Oh, you I, did? I, I, I was told uh, specifically and named. All right, here we go. I love this. I'm going to be proud of. <laughs> Steakhouse, Chop Shop, Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by the Chop Shop, home of the Indiana football and men's basketball coaches shows. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Hey, hey, welcome back. Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Friday. Uh, it's uh, all kinds of things going on, but uh, nothing bigger than the Big Ten Tournament that is up in uh, at the uh, North Pole, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Bob Kravitz from BobKravitz.com joins us now. Robert, how are you, sir? I am splendid. I spent the whole day in front of my TV, and it was fabulous. You get ready to do it again, too. I am. I am. I'm going to do some writing here. Going to write about the IU game last night, just a short little blog, because I am a blogger boy. And uh, we'll uh, just kind of play it by ear from there. Got Purdue at uh, noon and IU tonight. Yeah, IU coming off of a win, their fifth straight Big Ten win. Uh, that is a, a new uh, high for them for this season. Now having won five straight Big Ten games, 
uh, and uh, going into this tournament, they vanquished a, a team that they had lost to four straight times and were swept by this year. Tonight, they face another team that swept them. But last night's game, um, I don't know if it was good defense or just horrific offense by Penn State, but whoo, they started out really bad. Yeah, it was a little of both. I, I thought, I'll tell you what, I thought Gabe Cups guarded his butt off uh, against uh, Ace Baldwin. I thought Gabe Cups and, and, and Xavier, to a slightly lesser degree, did a phenomenal job on Baldwin and their backcourt. Um, they had gone nuts from three in the two previous meetings, and they uh, never really got off from three uh, yesterday. So it was it was an ugly game, but to do it without Galloway and uh, to beat a team that's uh, had your number, uh, good on them. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of the job Indiana did, Ace Baldwin Jr., the defensive player of the year, and daggone it, his hands are – Yeah. He, he's pretty good. Uh, yeah. Although he got away with a foul on Xavier Johnson going in there late in the late going. But uh, from behind the three-point line – uh, Baldwin and uh, Johnson uh, for Penn State go a combined one of 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, and that, that's, that's been IU's problem really since since the very beginning of the year was their three-point defense. And I thought I thought that they would they did a great job. They they didn't help much off of uh, uh, the big fella, Kudish uh, Wahab. Um, I, I just thought it was, it was, it was very game plan specific. They did a great job of sticking with the shooters and l let's face it. They just had a bad day too. So, you know, I, I wouldn't read in anything into it except where the hell has this team been all year? You know, I mean, it, it just blows my mind. You've got, um, the, the co-freshman of the year, you've got, uh, Ware, who's probably a draftee. Um, Renu, who's just a really good, solid player, has been averaging about 15, 17 points a game over the last however many games. How how were they as bad as they were all year? I, I don't get it. But I, I give Woodson and this group credit. They they pulled it together late, and it's probably going to be too late to make a difference in the NCAA tournament but at least it gives them a good taste in their mouths heading into next year. You know, and, and I agree with you. And I've said that, that nothing short of winning the big 10 tournament would get them in. No doubt. But, but man, uh, you, you start to think that, okay, they've won five straight now. Well, if they win tonight, they've won six straight big 10 games. If they happen to win one more seven straight big 10 games. And then I'm like, okay, hold on. Um, They've just got it. There's the, the, the magic line is 77. No team higher than 77th uh, in the, I think in the net has ever made the, uh, since they've right. gone to that, has made the tournament. And then but, they, uh, they came into the tournament at what, 93? Yeah. So I'm like, if they win three games, those will all be quad one wins. Can they somehow magically move up this, this, this uh, mysterious net that uh, you have uh, to climb. The problem is you've had a lot of bid stealers. You know, uh, there was the Atlantic 10, uh, Duquesne beating Dayton. Uh, and there was another bid stealer you, last You year. mean Rhode Island didn't win that? Yeah, uh, no, strangely enough. Our, uh, our, our, our she was not able to uh, get that done for you. But there have been, I believe, two bid stealers last night. Uh, I know of the one. I can't think of the other off the top of my head. But uh, it, it's not working out well for the Hoosiers. But, hey, you know, just keep playing, you know, survive in advance. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see We'll see what they got coming up next year. Well, partly because uh, everyone, for those, for the group of people are saying, well, why is everybody complaining? Uh, Indiana's right where... Everyone thought that they would be. Well, not where the fans thought they would be. The no. fans thought they were going to the Final Four. Uh, but for those that picked them to finish, say, fifth or sixth in the Big Ten, yeah. if if this were last year, 
fifth or sixth in the Big Ten is massively different because right. last year in the Big Ten, and I said this yesterday, there were eight teams with 20 wins or more. This right. year there are there's only four this mm-hmm. season. Uh, so it's it's markedly different uh, as far as that fifth place this year is way down to where that would have been uh, last year. Or yeah, last year. I'm I'm just I'm just blown away that I mean we're seeing now what they could have been, and that's that's what's frustrating is that. Um, and, and look, you know, I, they're I think they're five and zero or six and zero with with with, with Xavier Johnson. I don't think he's been particularly good. I thought he was pretty good last night, but um, boy, they, they he has to be. Yeah, no trade Callaway. Right, exactly. So uh, no, I mean they they finished basically where we thought they would finish, but I think a lot of the a lot of the questions there was just so many questions about IU with all the with the f- big freshmen coming in, you know with. With Khalil Ware, we didn't really know much about him. With Mackenzie Mbako, we didn't know a heck of a lot about him. And I'll tell you what, I'm so happy for Anthony Leal. Uh, the play he made at the end was just, it just shows you what happens when you hustle. You know, and he was in the corner doing nothing, and he decided to go to the basket, and uh, Ace Baldwin forgot to box him out, and he made the play. Just, just a phenomenal play. Just really heads up. That's want to. That's yeah. thinking. That is. That's all that time he spends on or spent and spends on the bench. His, his head was in the game. Yeah, all the time. He's calling out plays, calling out defenses to his teammates. He knows he might be the best coach on that team. Yeah. <laughs> He may be paying attention more than anybody else. Yeah. And that's why he was able to make that play. Yeah, it was. He wanted it. Um, and, it, yeah, you, you've got to be so happy for that guy. Yeah. Uh, and- I'm not I'm not crazy about their chances uh, tonight, but, you know, I mean, it's it's tough to – it's they, they've lost in Nebraska twice, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's hard to beat a te- team three times. Uh, that's what I'm told. That's- that's what they said to Penn State. Yeah, 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 and uh, we saw what happened. So, um, the, I'll tell you what: if I'm if I'm facing Nebraska, I'm I'm not guarding Tominaga because he only hits shots with somebody in his shirt. <laughs> Honest to Yo. God, you give him a freebie, he'll miss it. But if you're if you're up in his grill, he's going to knock it down. It's amazing. He, uh, he's been doing a phenomenal job for uh, Nebraska this year, and they are the number three seed, unbelievably. Uh, Indiana uh, taking on Nebraska tonight in the nightcap again. Uh, so we'll get to stay up late uh, and watch that game. But today is a game ju- or a day full of uh, – it's a great schedule. Uh, you've got Michigan State taking on Purdue. Yes. That's that's going to be a good game. That's I think Michigan game. State played very good, went very well yesterday. And M- Michigan State, uh, I was at that game uh, at Mackey a couple of, a couple of days ago, or maybe a week ago, whatever it was, and they hung in there. Uh, Michigan State. I mean, they gave they gave Purdue all it could want. And they, the question with Purdue is, do they really care? Do they, do they really? I mean. Honestly, going into the NCAA tournament, which is all that really freaking matters, uh, I'll be curious to see how much how much focus uh, Purdue plays with, whether they really care uh, to to give everything they've got in the Big Ten tournament. Because let's face it, you know, I mean, somebody asked Painter the other day; it was a dumb question about the importance of the Big Ten tournament, and you could just see. You could just see Painter like, yeah, it'd be nice to win it, but you know that's not that's not the uh, that's not the holy grail. You know that's well, not been, what, that's because they've been there already. They, yeah, been there, I mean, they've been there and they've got the T-shirt. They don't want the T-shirt. They want the banner. They want the confetti, man. The banner is 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 nothing but a gigantic shadow over the Purdue program right now, or it, really it has been, uh, and. 
with the last couple of years of having the team, of having the player of the year, of having the generational player of the last generation, um, pressures. I, I, I think the pressure's on. Not not saying that if, that something's going to happen. My, Matt Painter's not losing his job, uh, but there's still pressure on to win because oh, it's massive. It's massive. If not this year. When you've got everything in place that uh, that you need, and but that does not matter in this tournament, Bob. Uh, it's that's the great thing about this tournament. Not saying that they're not going to win or they can't win. You can have everything you need, but not win this tournament. It's, right. it's a it's a it's a battle of six games playing six teams that. Maybe you've never played before. Maybe it's six different styles. And mm -hmm. that's what makes this tournament wonderful. Yeah, and it's all going to be about matchups for them. And, you know, they, they've lost to the same type of team the last couple of years. You look at St. Peter's. You look at FDU. You look at uh, North Texas. All smaller teams with guards who could really break you down. And, and and get you you know get you all screwed up defensively, um, yeah. I mean, it just depends on who they play. It, it seems to me that the big it, it's just going to be it's such a mental hurdle for them after what's happened the last couple of years. People forget actually the the St. Peter's game was in the Sweet Sixteen. It wasn't an early round, super early round game, but still. That's a game they they needed to win. And again, they had the team, they had the team that 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 you thought was going to take them deep. But you know, you saw some signs late in the season where Lawyer and Smith both went cold, and then against FDU, I think they were six of twenty five from three, something like that. So um, you know, both those guys are shooting really well right now. I, I just don't see any any way they get beat before they get to the final four. Um, I, I haven't until I see the bracket breakout, man. I am not going to say anything because I've already said Houston will not be in my final four. Is that just because you hate Kelvin Sampson? Oh, absolutely not. I think he's a a, a great coach. Uh, he's one of the best college coaches there is, I think, right now. Currently, I, uh, I just think that uh, they're a team that's going to be. I think they're the surprise team of knockoff of getting knocked really? off. Yeah. Um, but we we'll see. Um, they could they'll, they'll now since I've said that they'll win yeah they're, going, they're they'll they're in the final four. You guarantee it. You guarantee it. They're going to hang back. <laughs> Uh, so coming up today, we've got a slate of incredible good games, and I know you'll be watching watching them all. Michigan State taking on Purdue. Uh, does Michigan State have a shot in that game? Uh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Because at Michigan State, I, I think you know, reading uh, reading a couple of a couple of stories, I, I think Michigan State is set. You know, in the NCAA tournament, I, I think winning the game the other day probably got them in. But I think there's still a, a small question. I think they're going to play with their hair on fire. I really do. And, uh, you know, uh, it's Tom Izzo. It's March. Things happen. And so I, I think this is going to be a very close, very, very competitive game. And it. Uh, and it doesn't have to be for Michigan State because somehow with the uh, metrics they're they're in. Um, they're in. And, and I've said that it, nothing short of Indiana winning the Big Ten tournament gets them in. I but agree. Uh, uh, man, if they get to the championship game, that will be three quad one wins added to uh, at least one or two that they picked up along the way uh, in this this winning streak that will would reach seven games. I, I don't know that that could possibly change my mind, but you said just because of the, the, uh, uh, bust, the bracket busters 
that there just might not be enough room, even right. if they accomplish enough. Well, I'll tell you what I would, uh, you know, if, if I'm completely uh, objective about it, I think Indiana state probably has more reason to, to scream and yell about not making it than Indiana for sure. Well, I was going to ask about them next. Do, do, do they have a shot still? They got a shot, but the Atlantic 10 screwed up everything. You know, Duquesne and Dayton, that now they're a two-bid two bid conference. And there was another upset last night, and I, I'm sorry. I'm just uh, I'm having a brain, uh, brain fart here. I can't remember who it was. But there, there, there's been some bid stealers, and it's going to be awfully hard. Last I saw, Indiana State was first four out. I still, I hate the fact that you can be a team like Indiana State, for example, um, that grinds out an entire season's worth of wins in a conference, and you win a conference, and here's what you get to show for it. Nothing. Dick. And, and <laughs> now you got to go play in a three-day quick quickie tournament and of which you, you happen to get knocked off, and, and that screws your whole season? Uh, I just... Yeah, I, I'm not, not crazy about it. I mean, uh, one of the few things I ever agreed with Bob Knight about was he hated the postseason tournament. Hated it. And look, if you go 20 games and you're able to uh, to make your statement and, and win, I mean, yeah, you're right. It's just, uh, I, I, you know, I understand why there are conference tournaments. Money, 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 TV, 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 money, money. Um but money, money, money. Yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't do that. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you you go through this twenty game gauntlet, and you have one one night that doesn't go for you, go right for you, and suddenly you're on the outside looking. And I, I just hope Indiana State makes it. I, I don't want to see some sixth place team from the, from the Big Ten to the SEC or whatever make it over uh make it over Indiana State. I think teams like Indiana State make the tournament special. Hey, St. Peter's, they won. Did they? They 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 keep rolling. They're they're uh they're into the uh let's see. They're they'll be in the semifinals of the uh MAAC tournament. Yes, of course, the MAAC Louisville looking for a coach. It seemed as if it was going to be an easy market for coaches, but it, it's almost now it's it's starting to turn into a a seller's market. There, there there's so many openings that are coming up. Yeah, uh, I mean, yesterday was like fire, Black uh, Thursday, Black Wednesday, rather firings everywhere. I'm like, yeah. ooh. Uh, these guys got fired. This guy, this job opening. Now there's the job opening, but you also saw guys re-upping schools, locking their guys down. Chris Beard, they, oh, uh, Ole, Ole Miss, Miss locked Chris Beard down. Um, who else did I see, uh, re-signed a contract? I, I forget, but, um, and then I, I've looked up, uh, Josh Schertz's contract at Indiana state. Do you know what he makes? Not much. Three hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars a year. Isn't that something? That's Woody's shoe budget. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, hey, I mean, well, the uh, I think a lot's going to depend on what Ohio State ends up doing. Do they do they keep Diebler? I, I how do you not? It's rolling, man. How do you not? He's six and one. Six and one. But I, you know, Louisville. I think I think the guy there is Dusty May. Really? I mean, it just makes the most sense to me. I have I done any research into this? Absolutely not. I read the papers like everybody else, but I got to think that Dusty May would be would be the guy at at, at Louisville. Uh, let's take a quick break and I'd like to carry that conversation on if possible, if you have a few extra moments. All right. Let's be back with more Bob Kravitz from bobkravitz.com. 
make sure you go there and sign up and uh, keep up with all things that are going on in the state of Indiana and more. But the Hoos the Hoosiers, the Boilers, the Colts, the Pacers, whomever it is, Bob's on it. Bob's on it. Back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. If you're looking for a- John breaks hey, my quick, knuckles Jim. if I don't what, take a break. That's okay. What time is um Leary? I forgot to ask you that earlier. I guess we'll just do 10 10. Okay, perfect. That's the only Does time we that? have, right? Yeah, yeah I just didn't know if he knew that. I just wanted to make sure. Well, we'll keep this short. Just kidding. Whatever you want. All I was thinking about your segment doesn't your your segment doesn't affect Leary. I was just curious about that earlier. All I can think about today is I hope it rains all damn day. Why? Thunders thunderstorms. Because sit in and watch college basketball all day. Are you kidding me? You can do that while it's sunny. (laughs) No, you can't. It's not as easy. You got you're always looking over your shoulder outside. It's supposed to be nice nice tomorrow. I want to play golf. Tomorrow, it's supposed to be nice. Uh, it's going to be 44 to... degrees on Monday. Uh, let me let me look at uh, Saturday, weather. the high is 60 something where I'm at. It might be a little lower where you all are at. Let me let me check indie weather here. Hang on, indie weather. Yeah, high of 63 on Saturday. Okay. Well, one other wrinkle in the Louisville thing that I didn't mention earlier, Jim, is apparently there is a way because of UCLA moving UCLA moving to the Big Ten, there is a way that Mick Cronin can get out of his contract for a much cheaper amount than what it currently is. And people were talking about that around here yesterday for Louisville. How's that? I don't remember the specifics of it. And there's a lot of people who think it's just nonsense. Why? Is, because Mick Cronin is the fit. He would come to Louisville. He knows people in Louisville from his time at Cincinnati. Hell, I know a girl he used to date in Louisville. A lot, a lot uh, of people would just, at least the people that I've talked to, would be underwhelmed just because a lot of people think that, I mean, he, he's been riding off the coattails of a fluke Final Four during 2020. That's the only thing he's ever really done. I don't know. He did. And that was a, good that job was a team that, had to, that only got in because they were in the play in game. Which that's, that's right. still a good run, but he hasn't. UCLA done swallows a lot of people. UCLA is a weird animal, man. It is weird. Well, it Steve Steve Hawkes. I mean, Hawkes. If you I'm take overall Hawkes. body of work, Steve Alford's done better than Mick Cronin. Mick Cronin again only had that one year with a good final, and he's been steadily declining since that season. Well, also, I don't think that uh, UCLA buys into the nil yeah um, and the cronin bitched about that so all right here we go guys okay payment free for 90 days or get 0.9 percent apr financing for 36 months on a 2023 honda ridge line go to anymorehonda.com and get more to your door this segment is brought to you by remax advanced realty indie home pros team by cheryl sizemore Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio. It's Friday, peeps. To all Yay. the true, to all the true fans out there, it's true. Friday. True fans. We've got a great true fan. Are you a true fan, Jim Coyle? I am not a fan. I threw my fan chip away. Yes, uh, I gave I gave my my card. I I gave my card in. Yep, it's uh just turned it in. Said no, nope, can't do that. Not in this job. Um, I had texted you yesterday, or, or actually, I sent out a tweet. Um, the uh, Indiana has a men's club hockey team, which yes. means they don't compete. Uh, at the collegiate level, although they are like a D three team, yeah, yeah, they're 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 a D three club. Um, they they there's no scholarships. You know, it's not like uh, you know Michigan State, Michigan, Ohio State, uh, Minnesota, etc., Wisconsin. 
Uh, it's a club team. Look, a, a couple of years ago, I was joking around with Fred Glass. I said, when the hell are we going to get a hockey team here? And he said, if you have $100 million lying around, we could talk. <laughs> and I checked with my financial lady and she laughed at me as she usually does. And the problem with, with hockey is the liability. Uh, it's incredibly expensive. You got to build yourself a barn. You got to, uh, you spend a lot of money on recruiting up in Canada and, and the Northern climes. Um, it's really expensive. And then with title nine, You've got to have a female equivalent. So you've got to have a woman's hockey team. That's incredibly expensive. So I I, I don't see it ever happening from, from your lips to God's ears, as my late mother used to say. I would love to see it. Um, you know, I played there from 78 to 82. Uh, now was that the same club then yeah, and now? Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. That's so they how long has that club team been around? Oh gosh! Since I, I, I gotta think the seventies. Wow, the early seventies. I, 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 I knew that you did, but I that's that's just amazing that they've had that club team for that long. Who pays for for their equipment? We do. So Kids. you have to buy your own equipment. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and and, and travel, and, and you know we you get money from the club federation. You get money from you know various groups but for the most part i remember my father having to cut a check every year uh so that i could play uh, college hockey I, I bring it up because uh indiana's men's club hockey team playing in the uh second straight final four for yeah. the division that they play That's in great. which which was actually going to be in in the indianapolis area but uh scheduling it, it's I don't know. There was a snafu. Let's just say that. Where, uh, so where were they going to play at uh, Farmers uh, Pepsi Coliseum or whatever? That no, was? no, no, no. It was uh, some ice rink up in Carmel, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, but then they said that, oh, no, we're booked for a different event. And I'm like, how How does yeah. something go on that far in advance? And you find out at the last second. But yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. a whole other thing. Earlier, John mentioned about my bobblehead. Someone yes. wanted a bobblehead. Um, Yarmir Yeager, I texted. Uh, Yarmir like, Yager. Yarmir Yager. I, uh, I texted Mike DeCourcy yesterday asking him if he was responsible. But someone stole Probably. the entire shipment of Yarmir Yeager's bobbleheads yeah yeah they, they you know who else they got yaramir yager oh him hey they got him too they got him too man yeah but, i mean that name was too well, hard what, you, to what do you yaramir yager yeah what do you do with two thousand bobbleheads i mean i was wondering that myself well i mean do you, do you, you go, go stand out on the like, street corner and sell those things yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nothing to see here, peeps. Just keep just pass on by. Nothing to see here. Yeah. Uh, well, what can you get for a Yarmir Yager bobblehead that with the full mullet? Uh, I like that concept. Oh, he got the mullet on there. That's He's got awesome. the big mullet. Yeah. He 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 was famous for his hair and his ability. Um, uh, artist Quasar Martin has painted a twenty by fifteen mural of. Caitlin Clark already in Indianapolis. I saw that over on 17th street on the West side. Uh, so she already has a mural in a city that she uh, yet officially has nothing to do with. Right. Right. That's I've never, I've, I don't think I've ever seen that. Well, I, I, I would bet you they, they've done something like that for Wembanyama in San Antonio. You know, I bet before. you Trace Jackson Davis did something like that with it. Oh with yeah, that, sure. that posterized dunk he put on him. That uh, was that early. was very very impressive. He's he's been a much better NBA player than I thought he would be. I I thought he would be a rotation guy, and he is. But he's been a better player than I expected, and I give he's him carrying all confidence. The in the world, absolutely hard work. It's it's all 
I, I give him all the credit, as a matter of fact, for working his ass off to get to that point and uh, doing that. Uh, we uh, Before we broke, we were talking about the Louisville job, and, and you think that Dusty May is the guy. I know that the, the betting odds that had Scott Drew, and I just kind of laughed. I'm like, man, he's got 18 years invested at Baylor. He just made $5 million. Why the hell would he leave? No uh, He's in a, in a great conference um to come re- have to resurrect a program not not that i think it would be terribly hard because it shouldn't be hard at indiana either uh and louisville is a, is a place where hell kenny payne was getting good recruits yeah so that's not a that's not a problem uh i i, I just i it would put dusty may very close to his home but I don't know, is Louisville a job that he would leave Boca Raton for knowing that the Indiana job will be open at worst in a few years? Well, I hadn't thought that far ahead, but, you know, you could still go to Louisville and jump to, jump to Indiana later. I mean, uh, I, 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 to me, it just makes perfect sense. I mean, he's, he's done a great job at FAU. Um, like you say, he's, he's from this area. Um, and I, quite, quite frankly, I can't think of a better, of a better guy for the job. I mean, we were talking with, uh, your producer, John about Mick Cronin and, you know, the fact that UCLA is moving to the big 10 and that, that might be a reason for him to think about going to, to Louisville, um, He's got a lot of connections from the Cincinnati days. So, you know, and the, the California schools operate differently than schools around the country. So uh, that might be, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. It's just. Well, we, and we saw Tim Kelly leave as head coach at UCLA. Right, exactly. To make a lesser job because things are not. I, I, and apparently. I, I'm thinking that these guys may think that hey, we're we're going to be at a competitive disadvantage yes. when we get to the Big Ten. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's things they they don't do in the California schools that they do uh, at the Louisvilles and the Indianas. So uh, I, you know, it's just a name to throw out. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Travis is asking uh, why are people assuming he wants the IU job? Has he stated that? Well, of course he doesn't. He's not going to state that. No one states that, uh, that you want X job while you're at another job. Uh, your employers would not take kindly to that, uh, I'm pretty certain. But uh, I, I, would, uh, I, I would make a large wager that if I you yeah. offered him the job, he would jump at it. Yes. Uh, that's a fairy tale story, man. Former manager becomes the coach. Shoot. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's an, that's an Angelo Pizzo movie waiting to happen. Exactly. Exactly. No, it, 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 it makes too much sense not to happen at some point. Oh, before I let you go, a couple of quick things that are funny that I found out yesterday. Terry Morin has a clause in her contract. Her buyout is only $550,000 making 1.2 million now. Congratulations to her. Except if she were to go to Purdue and the buyout is 10 million. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Way to go, Terry. Uh, that's actually, I think that was a Fred glass thing. So, yeah. uh, but she, I, I saw her thing where she was talking about that and she, he said that and she kind of laughed and then she got her contract and she read it. She goes, damn, that's in writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. That, and uh, the USA Today had a piece the other day of the five most overpaid coaches in college basketball. Where was Woody? Numero El numero uno. uno. Guess who was number two? Uh, no clue. John Calipari. Mm. Number three was Kenny Payne. Yeah. Indiana, Kentucky, and Louisville in the top three slots of that wow. distinctive category. Whoa, whoa. I, I forget what I I know what he got that raise. What does Woody make annually? Do you know? 4.2. 4. 4.2. 4. Yeah, that's about half is what his Calipari makes. 
Right, right. Well, you know, I mean, he did get into the NCAA tournament two years in a row, which is something that uh, our friend Archie was incapable of doing, although they would have made it during the pandemic season. Um, I'm not ready to give up on Woody yet. Hey, he's might he's 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 making a a, a fight for his job, no no doubt. Which not that he needs to, he's not going well, anywhere. But well, well, uh, hey. so what's up next for you again? I well, know I'm, that, uh, I'm, I'm gonna sit down now with a cup of coffee and write a short blog about uh, last night's game, and I'll watch the games this afternoon and write blogs off of that. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a blogger boy today. You do it, baby. it, You do it. You do you, Bob Kravitz from BobKravitz.com. Appreciate you, sir. All right, Enjoy buddy. your weekend of watching college basketball. I will do the same. All right. We've got lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio, brought to you by Cheryl Sizemore and Remax Realty. If you're looking for a home in the Indianapolis area, you need Cheryl and her two decades of experience. It could be the difference between getting the home you want or not. Reach out to her at Cheryl at IndyHomePros.com. We're back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the market. Man, I'm hungry. I need a, I don't have coffee. I, I'm going to have to make tea. Of of all the names that have been thrown around for Louisville, and there's there's a lot, obviously. The three that seem to potentially will disappoint people the most are Josh Shirts. Mick Cronin, and that's true, believe it or not. People would be disappointed in getting Mick Cronin. Not everybody. And then Dusty May, believe it or not. Which I, I, I again, honestly, kind of the same boat as Mick Cronin, except he's not coached as long. He only has one final full run in the years who previous. Who, who do they want? I mean, the, the want and who they're going to get is a different story. Want is Scott Drew. I don't think they're getting Scott Drew. Uh, a lot. They also like Eric Musselman and Jerome Tang. And I mentioned before that it wouldn't surprise me if they get Jerome Tang. Um, but it could be it could be somebody that we haven't even mentioned. But anyway, we got ten seconds. Uh, Zach's not here yet, but I would think he'll be here shortly. Stonecrestliving.com. That's mystonecrestliving.com for more details. This segment is brought to you by the Ugly Grouper. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington.
Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Friday, March 15th. We're in the heart of college basketball, baby. The uh, conference tournaments are well underway. Big Ten in the quarterfinals play today. Four games in total. Yesterday, all kinds of action. Duke upset yesterday by North Carolina State over in the ACC. A lot of firings, Vanderbilt's Jerry Stackhouse gone after five seasons. But how can you survive at Vanderbilt? I mean, you have to know when you go to Vanderbilt, if you've got a five-year contract, you're like, hey, man, I'm good with that. Whatever that total is, it goes, I'm going to have that amount of money because you're not making out of that. You're not making it out of there alive. That's just, uh, it's just a place that they, it's just just been too hard to win at in, in college basketball. And especially now, unless they get into the NIL game, uh, Stanford fires their coach after eight season. So there's another coaching, uh, opening, but that's not exactly the most attractive position. DePaul quickly moves to hire Ohio State's Chris Holtman as their new head coach. Man, he was not out of a job long. What what was it a week and a half? Or, or I mean, two, how long's it been now? 2 weeks? Nah. 2 weeks? I do feel like hit the argument for him and getting a I and mean, not that DePaul's a great job. I mean, it could be worse, but it's definitely on the best landing spot. But the argument he can make is that, hey, those are my guys for Ohio State that are doing well right now. They didn't give me a shot to finish the season. Uh, and, and again, so, uh, I, I, I I know what you're thinking, and I, I agree yeah. with you. I don't think they would finish the way that they are had he still been the head coach. They were his the guys beginning. all year long. Yeah, and that's true. And we don't know what the culture was like with him as head coach, but I'm sure he used that as an argument. Like, hey, Ohio State didn't give me a fair chance to, to finish the season, so... Well, I think, DePaul doesn't, I think it could uh, be a good place for him, potentially. Yeah, I agree. Beggars can't be choosers, and DePaul is a beggar, not a not a chooser. Only They're, had three wins on the season this year, and one of them was a 20-plus point victory over Louisville. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, three gosh. wins, and one of them was over Louisville by that many points. Isn't that insane? Dude, that's, that's rough. Yeah. Uh, he signed a six-year deal, so... There, there you go. He's got six years worth of pay coming again. Uh, I think he was at Ohio State for seven years. He's set for life, man. Yeah, I mean, any college. Once you get a, a major contract, I mean, you're set for life with one major contract almost. You ain't lying. Lil Rody. Oh, yeah. He may be an awful paid to fail coach, everywhere he goes. A, he's a wealthy man. But yeah, DePaul quickly making a move because I I assume they thought that hey, Cohopin's a good coach. He didn't forget how to coach. Whatever went wrong, something went wrong. It didn't happen. Um, and and DePaul thought that would be good to jump on, and I agree with him. I think that's a hell of a hire for them, to be honest with you. Um, he brings a lot of notoriety and uh, recruiting. So there's that. Uh, Michael's excited for, uh, his boilers to get after today as they take on Michigan state. How focused are they? Uh, we'll see. Does Michigan state have a shot at upsetting Bob? Think so. Uh, of course they've got a shot. Bob made a really good argument there because Bob makes the same old song and dance for Purdue. I mean, the only thing they have left to prove, and we've kind of talked about it a lot over the past couple of weeks is getting out of the first round of the NCAA tournament. Yeah, all, that, that's what they need to do. They need to make an NCAA tournament run. And I think there is a chance if Michigan State is firing all, on all cylinders that Purdue could be on upset alert today. I'm not predicting that, but there's a very good chance that I think that that could happen today. I, I was talking to someone yesterday, and I mentioned that Calipari was one of these you know, on that list of uh, most overpaid coaches. And and somebody, what, oh, what are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Whoa, whoa. I go, man, they haven't won an NCAA tournament game since 2019. 
Well, that's I said that's true. going. They on. won. They won last year. They won eight. Oh, they did. But they haven't gotten to the second won, weekend. I don't think since 2019. Then that was the only win since 2019. I believe so because last year they lost to Kansas State in the round of 32. Who just uh, did they not just re up their their coach? No, that's Jerome Tang. I could be wrong, but that's one of the guys that Louisville's looking at, potentially looking at. Unless that well, happened this morning. Sure unless that happened were, today. But- no, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Drew Tang was. You, you want to talk about needing a scorecard to keep up with all this? You've got f- teams playing in conference tournaments and coaches getting fired and then coaches getting hired and then coaches getting re upped in contracts. It's like, whoa, what the hell? Uh, y- y- there is no busier time on planet Earth uh, for, for college sports than right now. This, this whirlwind. Oh, I forgot about that thing called the portal that also opens up right now so all of that going on at once that's like a a tornado and a hurricane combining with an earthquake uh it, it's just everything is going on at the same time and all going in different directions energy pulling in different directions firings hirings playing signings uh decommitments you've got a little bit of everything right now people um so there's that. Uh, there was a piece in the Indy Star quickly, and I, wanna, I wanted to make sure I mentioned this about the Avon High School Orioles mascot they call Big O, Owen Carr. He's uh, become a star. He's going to get be featured on CBS Sports Inside College Basketball prior to the A10 Championship game on Sunday. So uh, make sure you check that out because it's not just your. Um, regular mascot. He has uh, overcome a lot of things in his life, and he is greatly loved by uh, by the people there at Avon High School. So looking forward to that. Todd Leary is going to join us this hour, as well as Casey Bartley will get uh, his take on the Boilermakers and their uh, go at it with Michigan State today as uh, they kick off Big Ten tournament action. I uh, am looking forward to it because now these games are, these games all are going to, they all mean something. They all offer opportunity for certain teams. Michigan State, uh, they have the opportunity to solidify their projected position in the NCAA tournament. Not only that, to raise themselves. I think I heard him say Mike DeCourcy said they uh he had North Carolina or uh, Michigan State as a a 10 seed before yesterday and they won. So uh they've got that going for them, which is nice. Uh you've got that. Kello Ware, how about the game he played last night? I mean, Anthony Leal was the you know hero at the end, but everything starts and ends with Kalel Ware for this Indiana team. 18 and 14. He was four of six at the free throw line. Malik Renew, four of four at the free throw line. Mackenzie Mbako, three of four at the free throw line. Anthony Leal, three of four at the free throw line. Indiana goes 14 of 18. They shot 78% at the free throw line. If you don't think these simple little things make a difference, what's the final score? 61 to 59. Although Indiana was outshot at the free throw line, they made normally... With 18 free throws, we, we'd see him shoot 10 of 18 or something. Well, that would have cost him just four points, but that would have cost him this game. One thing that uh, Penn State did well was get to the free throw line last night and sink them. They did as well. They go 20 of 24, shooting 83% at the line. But that other line, the arc, mm, not so much for either team. Penn State, 7 of 27 for 26%. Indiana, 3 of 12 for 25%. 
although the percentage sucked for Penn State, they still sank four more triples. Uh, but Indiana hits 22 shots overall, which are six more than uh, Penn State got. Indiana just destroyed Penn State in the paint, of course, with Malik Renew and uh, Kalel Ware. Uh, Renew also a good night, 12 and 8, 12 points, 8 rebounds. He in 33 minutes, Xavier Johnson playing 37 minutes, the most on the team. He was running the offense. He only scored four points. He took five shots, hit two of them. Uh, but he had six rebounds. I, I and half of those came in the first few minutes of the game. I was like, man, he's getting a lot of rebounds already. And that makes a difference. Xavier Johnson grabbing rebounds and getting the ball up the floor. Indiana needs to be more of a faster paced team. Uh, I've talked about that with Todd on the post game show, and uh, I'll talk about it a little bit here in a little bit when he joins us, but they, they just seem to perform better and succeed more when they are a faster paced team and not just rely on points in the paint, which last night it was 32 to 18 for Indiana over Penn state there. Um, and they also were second chance points. They led that category 14 to 10. And that was the one that Penn state had, an opposite disparity in for most of the game. So Indiana started getting some offensive rebounds, although they did get out rebounded offensively 13 to 10. There was also a bigger gap there. They end up out rebounding Penn state by two 41 to 39, the points off turnovers identical at 11 uh, Indiana with 12 turnovers and they forced 10 out of Penn state. So pretty close there. And, uh, so that's why all those little things are, are so important. Steals, four to three, Penn State. Uh, so it's it's pretty close there. They kept that. They ate 13 assists for Indiana in, in, off of 22 shots. That's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So they're doing little things uh, to win right now. And as Bob said, they're quite capable of, of beating Nebraska. They're, that's not a, a, a in question. Um, but they have to continue to do s these little things that they haven't done well. Hitting free throws consistently. You cannot have a night where you, you against Michigan State, they were like, at one point they were four of 10, 40%. You, you, can't, you can't do that without putting yourself in peril. Um, you, if, when you do that, you're just making the hill more st steeper. You, you got to flatten the road, man. Do the little things. Don't turn the ball over. Don't miss free throws. They're easy. They're free. Just relax. Knock them down. That'll help Indiana immensely. But they're going to have to continue to – they did a great job last night on Ace Baldwin. They did a great job defending the three last night. They're going to have to continue to do that against Tominaga um, and his Nebraska running mates tonight. But I think that they can do that. I think that they're in that flow. That's another advantage of being able to play a game without Trey Galloway because, uh, let's face it, he didn't dress – and while they're they're only going to list him as questionable, I, I don't know how you list somebody as questionable who doesn't dress for the game. That's not questionable to me. That's out. Unless you plan on sending him back in the locker room and and and, and suiting up, uh, I think that's disingenuous by Indiana. I know that they're trying to play some gamesmanship here, and he'll be listed as questionable again. But he didn't even dress. I I, I think that uh, I know there's been rumors about his injury and exactly what it is. I've heard nothing different, but I I don't know that to be a fact. So I I I, I can only say what the rumor was, and I'm not going to do that. You all know what the rumor is, so I'll let you 
with that knowledge that you already have and what you saw last night, the fact that he didn't play in a game that Indiana needed to win. Uh, I, I mean, I, are they holding him out for the NIT? I, I don't think so. I, I don't know that you see him again, but I don't know that you don't. Like I said, I'm not going to pretend I know what's uh, the extent of his injury because uh, knowing what it probably is, there are two ways that that can be, a partial or a complete. Partial, eh, you can get by with it. Complete, mm, not so much. Not so much. We've got to take a break. We've got lots more coming up. I think uh, Casey Bartley's up next. Is that right, John Boyd? That is what's on the docket. That sounds like a winner. And then we've got Todd Leary. Stay tuned. We've got more Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Big Ten Tournament Friday. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Formally, never heard from Zach, but oh well. Well, to hell with him. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, I'd like to. You know how weird that is that this is being said. That was John. being said. The bobblehead, oh, Jim bobblehead, Coyle bobblehead. Yeah, what about it? I don't know why on God's green earth, but I was thinking that yesterday. That you need a bobblehead? No, that it would be funny if I had a bobblehead of me. Oh, I think it'd be funny. Not, not you know, to give away, but I, I now, but now the thing, the weirdness. It's the weirdness of. I was thinking about that yesterday. Yeah. How funny, just how funny it would be. But there is nothing funnier than that damn Geico commercial in uh, Desmond Howard, and he, he's he got a Desmond Howard bobblehead. He goes, and he imitates it, and it's like, oh, my God, that was hilarious. That and the, no, 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 don't touch that. Not so fast, my friend. Not so fast, my friend. Do you know what commercial I'm speaking of? I'm sure I've seen it, but I'm not picturing it in my head right now. John, I agree with you, sir. And you know what? I know exactly who to look into but for that. Now, the thing is, if if I got those done, that would look really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Um, like you think highly of yourself. Uh, er not arrogant. Well, it, that could look really arrogant. And that would not be the point. It would be actually, if I did, it would be comical. But I would only would give them away. We don't have Casey, by the way. He hasn't said anything to me, and he's also up in Minneapolis. So I guess uh, being in Minneapolis excludes people from doing things. I'm just kidding. They also may not realize what time it is because they're in central time and they, they may realize an hour later, like, oh shit, it's a different time. Oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 uh, that does get you some time. Um, but it's okay. Uh, I sent a text to Todd to see. If yeah. He can... You can tell him to hop on if, he, if he's ready. Todd. There, right, here we go. I wish you could pull up, uh, uh, there was a clip from Saturday Night Live in which old clip uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell it to you later. CRVs, Honda Ridge Lines, payment free for 90 days or get 0.9% APR financing for 36 months on a 2023 Honda Ridge Line. Go to AndyMoreHonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville and Evansville. Pizza, burgers, beer. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyne, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Friday, Tournament Friday, baby, Big Ten Tournament Friday, uh, everybody else as well. Hey, on Monday, Matt Martin, 
from the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame will join us. In addition to Greg Rakestraw and Don Fisher and uh, Travis Miller, we'll have a, a full slate uh, and a full slate of basketball to talk about coming off of the weekend because, oh yeah, that's Selection Sunday, um, Championship Sunday, all kinds of stuff going on uh, as the teams for the Hall of Fame Classic are going to be announced. And I believe you can hear that first right here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio on Monday. Looking forward to that. Uh, have you noticed that Congress is finally, well, not finally, but they're looking at potentially banning TikTok, John. So uh, all those all those videos you've been making in your bedroom, <laughs> you may not have a place to go with them anymore. I can't tell if you're if you're referring to my podcast clips or if you're trying to make a joke about something inappropriate. <laughs> but I was trying to make a joke about something inappropriate. Oh, okay, because <laughs> I, I have been on TikTok ever since we started doing the podcast. But I yeah, that, that do, is a little. I I do not have that on my phone. I'm going to be honest with straight up honest with you. That is the one thing I do not have on my phone. I know it is a a massively uh, used format. But I have just not, I'm not political. You don't hear me talk about politics, but I, that it, it is, I do not trust the Chinese China. government. I don't get you. And I get you. Uh, I only have it because And this is coming from for... a non-political person. Oh, but yeah. I know that, I know that China is trying to everything possible to screw with America. It's sending those damn uh, spy deal, spy whatever yeah. they sent over that got shot down and all that stuff. But, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I'll, I'll say two things. One, China's going to do what they do regardless. I mean, they can get access to things that we probably don't even realize, even if it's not related to TikTok. And then also I only use it because of out of touch, the podcast that me and a few others do. Um, and, and it's just a good way to get people to discover the show. I mean, I don't use the scroll. Uh, hey, it's just too much. I don't. To do. uh, I don't blame you. I'm not uh, at all. But after a bill calling for the forced sale or ban of TikTok blazed through the House, senators on Thursday dialed back the pace, urging cautious deliberation on an effort that could shutter an, an app used by more than 100 million U.S. users. The legislation represents a severe threat to the popular video sharing apps operations. It advanced just eight days after its introduction in a 352 to 65 vote, unfettered by popular video apps aggressive campaigning. Man, this is a bipartisan thing. So, uh, but the, 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 the senators are slowing it down a bit, but some senators fear the slower negotiations could allow TikTok's furious lobbying blitz to neutralize the push in the upper chamber. TikTok unleashed a sprawling attempt to thwart the bill, urging its users to blanket Congress with calls and dispatching CEO Xiao Zichu to campaign on the Hill. China wants you to support them. And here, here, I'll say one more thing about it. If TikTok were to get banned, it, I wouldn't, I mean, that would obviously get rid of something that I've been using. But if it's banned for everybody, then I guess I don't happen. really care because it's not like I'm losing an advantage that other people have, you know, but it would just be gone. It, it, they'll go someplace else. Yeah, there'll be something else. Uh, what is it? Okay, I don't use TikTok. What makes it so different? from so the entire thing with tiktok compared to say an instagram or a youtube or a twitter is that all of it is entirely algorithm based if you make a post and it'll get shipped out to a few hundred people and if it does well to those few hundred people then it'll go out to another group of people and to get a viral video on tiktok it has to do well in the first few quadrants if that makes sense, of people that see the video, and that's how you eventually make it big off a certain video on TikTok. 
You have to know See, how like, to work the algorithm. Yeah. I, I, I failed algorithm in school. <laughs> yeah, I didn't pass that. So like yeah, uh, the show, that's not something that you would see on TikTok. It just seems like they're all short videos. Is that what it is? I mean, yeah. So it, it, it's they're vertical videos and there's all sorts of different niches on TikTok like that. I mean, there's podcast clips. There's people that share like, you know, life hacks. I mean, there's any anything that you're interested in, you can find it on TikTok. Again, I don't use it for personal like things. I only use it for posting stuff to promote the show that I do. And, and that's really the only I, I refused to get it for years just because there was no point in me. Like, it's, it's just another thing to consume my time. But in but I realized in terms of I guess from a business standpoint, even though I'm not making money off of it, it was something I wanted to try out just to see what what happened from it. And that's I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, it certainly is. Oh, oh yeah, you can say the name of uh, Out of Touch. Oh yeah, yeah, the show's Out of Touch. If for those of you who have not found, I did see somebody asking about in the comments, but. We post it weekly on my YouTube channel, which is just Out of Touch Media, and you can find it on Spotify as well. And it's it's me, uh, Dustin Shooty, who used to be on this show regularly, and Mitchell Page. And we don't talk sports a ton, so if you're looking for sports content, we're not really in that lane, but we kind of just talk about our personal lives and stay and in your lane, bro. We do, huh? What's my lane? That's it. I was kidding. You said oh. lane, so it just made me. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Stay in your lane, uh, bro. Yeah, honestly, I talk about a lot of uh, embarrassing things that I do in my life. Like, yeah, I talk well, about me, doing yard work on this show. Whoa, whoa, and, give me, uh, give me the most embarrassing thing you've talked. I'll about. I'll talk about just one thing that we did. I talked about on this show or this week's show is that um, I I broke out the lawnmower for the first time this week, and within three or four minutes of me going around the perimeter of my yard, a big white plume of smoke came out of the exhaust pipe of the the engine of the lawnmower and i completely freaked out and thankfully it didn't explode on me but if you want to hear the whole entirety of the story and uh dustin's reaction and, and mitchell's reaction uh you can check that out on youtube spotify and we'll, we'll, we'll it should be on apple podcasts soon but because i'm not an apple user it is a lot more difficult to get things submitted to apple podcasts for whatever reason so yeah out of touch. I'll leave it at that. Check it out if you uh, want some nonsense and a good time because that's what we do. We have a good time. Oh, everybody needs some nonsense in their life. Right? That's right. Yeah, we, we've been doing it for a little over six months now. we got 33 episodes up. Do them once a week. Hey, that's you got to stay at it, man. You got to yeah. stay at it. Uh, a lot of other basketball games last night. Did, uh, did you watch any basketball at all last night? I obviously watched the Indiana game. I kept track with, I made some bets throughout the day yesterday. And in the early slate of games, I had a three leg parlay easily. I had Wisconsin covering against Maryland. Uh, I had North Carolina covering in their game. I, I believe I had UConn covering as well. And all three of those worked out for me. So, um, didn't watch a ton, but made some bets. UConn Jack? What is it? What's a UConn Jack? Oh, come on, man. Oh, yeah, if it's a movie reference, I, pro I probably don't know it. It's not really a movie reference, but uh, speaking of Yukon Jack, Yukon uh, jacked Xavier yesterday, 87 to 60 in the Big East tournament quarterfinals. Houston in the Big 12 over TCU, 60 to 45. So, low scoring game there for a those are both Big Ten tournament or uh, NCAA tournament teams. TCU is twenty-one and twelve. There's, uh, there's in the there. There's no way they're not going to make it. Hey, Todd we Leary, want, we can we can go ahead and hit our last break, and then we can we can go along with Todd to end the show if you want to go and hit the last break. As we should. Hey, don't forget for those down in Florida or traveling, make sure you stop in Anna Maria Island's Ugly Grouper and uh, have a bite. Have a fresh grouper sandwich. The food is incredible. 
And, uh, you know, they have somebody that just stands off the back and fishes right out of the ocean, right? Right from the ocean to your table. Uh, but we've got lots more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio with the Todd Father recapping last night's Big Ten tournament action and what's in store for tonight. Back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the I didn't even see your messages last night. I was so glad. I was like, boy. Were you I was, asleep? Were you asleep? I, I don't think I was asleep. My my <laughs> phone at eleven o'clock, my phone goes into my phone goes into do not disturb disturb uh -huh. mode. And I saw him, but when I saw him, I was still up. It was like 1230. I'm like, oh shit. I didn't see those. But uh, I was like, I was so glad. I'm like, man, I, I did not want to get out of bed to do yeah. that. No, I hear you. I hear you. I think if but Galloway there, I doesn't think play a, tonight, the Indiana I, doesn't win. He's, he's, not, he's, with him, they he's, he's done. He's not playing. I, he's, done. he's done for the year. If you didn't yeah. see him last night, because last night's game was just as important as tonight's game. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, and and you're in, in, a, so in a knee situation. That. That it's Indiana. This, this is my big freaking pet peeve. This is Indiana. Like, this is all the way back to the Bob Knight days. They don't release any information about anything. <laughs> they think it's like this, like they're the can FBI you turn your or camera. Something. Oh, you can't turn your deal sideways, can you? No. Um, well, that's a lot of people now, uh, partly because of HIPAA, <clears throat> but... It's there's a lot of gamesmanship, I, but I, I talked before you joined us. I said, okay, how the hell do you list a guy as questionable when he's not even dressed? Yeah, I know he was as questionable as you and I were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'd love to see him win. Only. I just, I don't know why. My usually I have more confidence in the average fan, but. I just don't see it happening tonight for whatever reason. Yeah, I know it's. I mean, based on if you look at it on paper, you're right. Like they, they shouldn't have a chance to win because they this team's beat the crap out of them every time they played. But at the end of the day, when you look at it, it's Nebraska. Look, at, look exactly like look at all the teams left to play. Like look at their roster versus our roster. Why? Why should we not win that game? Oh, Indiana is. is from a roster standpoint, yeah, I know they're way higher than, but they're just I mean, not getting. You the wouldn't production. trade. You wouldn't trade one guy across the board. I would take Tommy Naga. At the you start would, of this season, you wouldn't. You at the start of this season. At the start of this season, if anybody asked you, uh, "I'll trade you Tommy Naga for," you would have said no. You wouldn't even let them finish their sentence. Uh, neither would it, I or anybody else. No one saw that coming. I don't think. Yeah, all right, here we go, he, guys. All right. 10 seconds. Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by Hoosier Hanks East. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Speed Radio here on this Friday, March 15th. It is tournament time. The Big Ten tournament well underway. Today, the quarterfinals. Indiana plays the last game as uh, they knock off Penn State last night after losing four straight games to the Nittany Lions. Now they face a team that uh, swept them this season. They've lost two, but there are three other Big Ten team, uh, games rolling before that. Uh, and looking forward to all of them. These should Todd Todd Leary joins us now. Todd, how are you, sir? I'm great. It's a championship week, of course. I'm great. Boy, it's that time, man. And but the, and these games at the, in the Big Ten tournament today, all four of them. I'm like, I can't wait to watch that one. Michigan State and Purdue. I, I know everybody thinks Purdue is going to run them off the floor. Michigan State is. It seems like they found a gear since they got beaten by Indiana. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I okay. I mean, I guess that's. What I'm not saying said. they're going to upset no, them, and, but. and I know you're not. But but look, we're only saying that because of Tom Izzo. Otherwise, yeah. that team has underachieved. Be and everybody's kind of like afraid to say it. And I'm I'm not like trying to be the guy that steps out. I'm just saying that team was rated fourth in the country nationally for two reasons. One, they have very good. One was old Tom, guard. and the other was Izzo. Very good old guards. Like their guards are what you say you need to be really good in today's college basketball. And secondly, is Tom Izzo, not necessarily in that order. And boy, they they just like they are not beating Purdue. Like they're not. They're not even come close. Wisconsin and Northwestern. This may be the most evenly matched game of the day. Uh, Northwestern, even though they're they're without Ty Berry, Wisconsin was lighting it up yesterday from uh, the three point line. I think they hit thirteen three point shots yesterday, if I, my memory's right. But they're taking on a Northwestern team who who likes to shoot from out there as well. Uh, so that's this could be a uh, an entertaining game. Yeah, I mean, here's one of the here's one of the situations that I think. When you get to this time of year, obviously we all spend a lot of time talking about it, or especially me thinking about like seedings and the bracketology stuff. Like I love that stuff. Like if uh, I wasn't a doctor, so I use this as my PhD because I, I love studying these things or whatever. And Northwestern is a is one of those really really hard teams to figure out where to put them because they played well enough to make the NCAA tournament, but they're not the same team now that they were during all of those wins that were the great wins and you know injuries unfortunately it's a huge part of the game i know we all just say that and then we just move on to the next sentence after that but this team really really has been hit by the injury bug and and it'll be interesting to see if their big matthew nicholson guy or whatever plays today if he doesn't play today which he was on crutches five days ago if he doesn't play today that team is one of those teams that if they lost today, um, man, I, I just don't even know where you see them. I don't. They're not the same team that played well enough to make the tournament. Uh, and then uh, let's see, Ohio State and Illinois. The Ohio State is the darling right now of everybody. Uh, Deep <laughs> since taking over, Coach Diebler, interim Coach Diebler, what is do you now do? Six yeah. Is now six and one, uh, with with a win over Purdue uh, in that in that stretch. Yeah. If he were to knock off Illinois, that's his just just give is him this, the contract. Is it's this over. a Mike Davis? Is this a Mike Davis situation right here? Because I mean, you, what do you do? Like Ohio State is, and I I shouldn't say that like it's a negative. It may be great because there's zero chance they were giving him the job when they first named it, tagged him as interim. There's zero chance he was getting it. And now it's almost like they're almost for if they make the NCAA tournament, which I, I can't believe they're even in the discussion of based on where they were six weeks ago, then then I mean they he might be able to sue him for a wrongful termination if, <laughs> if he doesn't get the job at that point. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Uh, and trust me, he's politicking for the job already. I heard well, sure. uh, some post game comments last night, and oh, I heard he was talking about oh, I just my this he, he answered something, and then he said, I, but I just I love this school, I love this program, I love these guys. I only want to see them do this, and I he he said all the right things, baby. He was kissing the babies and shaking the hands. Uh, so he's no dummy either. Yeah, no, and and you know what? Like he gave credit to Coach Holtman. He he congratulated Coach Holtman on getting named a DePaul head coach yesterday. Um, and so you know he he is doing all the things right. And Jim, let's just say this: I don't know that there's any magic dust you sprinkle on these guys to all of a sudden when they change coaches or they have that situation that these guys just play that much differently. But you can see it in their eye. Like, they're playing for kind of a purpose now. They're playing a little different than they were before. And they're having fun. You can see them a lot of loose, laughing. Like, they're they're having a good time. And and it's a unique situation. It's weird. I mean, I shouldn't say unique because it does happen from year to year. It just uh, – it's not not an everyday thing. And, and it'll – they're an interesting story. I When you look at that, this is where I struggle 
with the bracketology stuff because when you look at where they finished in the Big Ten and everybody's talking about them if they make a run in the tournament, you know, beating Illinois today might get them to the point where they are, you know, on the bubble or in the in the tournament. How's that possible? Like, I don't get that. I just – I said it earlier because I have been so adamant – that there is no way that anything short of winning the Big Ten tournament will get them in, and but now and now, but now they they keep winning. So it really it starts to in the back of your mind, your just common sense starts to grind on you. That let, let's say that, that Michigan State loses today, Indiana wins, um, Ohio State uh, wins. <laughs> let's say they got to the championship game. They, they're not, they don't win it, but they get to it. That's three more wins. That gives them 21 wins and Michigan state gets beat. So now they have a better record than Michigan state. They've got wins over Michigan state. They've got wins over Ohio state. They swept them. Both of those teams are probably in the tournament right now. Uh, I, I'm going to guess, especially after Ohio state winning yesterday. Uh, that was an upset of sorts beating number seven, Iowa. Uh, I, I, I'm starting to wonder if Indiana can make up because they've got a lot of ground. And that's why I said that it was just, it's, it's no way, but damn it. I, I don't know how much they can jump because all these wins will be quad one wins, Todd. Uh, yeah. And to get consecutive, uh, <laughs> they went so long without even having one and to hell, they're going to have like four in a row or something. Yeah, I mean, th this is where th there's obviously a flaw in the in the system, in that it, it should be you can go through the net rankings and the Ken Palms and those, and you can look at them, and you can see. Well, hang on a second. Why why is this team rated this much worse than another team with almost identical records that have beat almost the identical people, and 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 in a lot of cases even worse records. And I'm talking about people in the same league. I'm not comparing like Indiana State and and Ohio State or or Michigan State or something like that. I, I'm comparing like teams in the same conference because how are you going to put a, a team in? Ohio, Ohio State's not in right now. They they are not in the tournament right now. But if they won today, they would be probably on the bubble or in that last four out. And if, then if they were by chance able to win tomorrow and get to the championship game, they would probably be somewhere in that last four in area based on everything that I've watched. And and how that and they don't even have Indiana in the discussion, like zero discussion, like unless they win the Big Ten tournament, zero chance. And so I, well, I but, don't understand how that's possible because their their resumes are not dissimilar. Uh, the highest – a team's net ranking to get in, I believe, is a 77. And that's why now I'm like, well, damn, if they win three games. Yeah, they're know, already at what, like 84? Yeah, they were like 86 or something. I'm like, uh, they can very easily get inside that. And if they get inside that, then that's not another precedent that would have to be set. So that kind of takes that off the shelf to make it a little easier. And you're looking at a team that plays in the Big Ten, which is still as bad as it looks, number two conference in the net. So now you've got a team that finished fifth and uh, has wins over two of the teams that you have in. Uh, it, it's it's going to be yeah. more and more difficult for them to keep them out. But uh, – it, yeah, we'll it's see. just hey, this is why the discussion is so so big and aggressive this time of year, and I mean it just becomes it becomes a free for all, and then, and then you you know that we're making an argument for like Indiana right now. I, imagine if you're Indiana State. I mean, imagine oh. them sitting there for an entire week. Like this is probably one of the worst weeks of their lives. Well, unless uh, Louisville hires shirts away from them, <laughs> um, I. I keep repeating this to every guest we talk about this. Do you know what he makes? Shirts? Yeah. Uh, I do not. Well, most coaches are all in the, you know, well into six figures. He makes $356,000 a year. Yeah, I mean, that's not surprising. It, that's not surprising there, to be honest with you. 
Uh, and I mean, we deal with Big Ten coaches' salaries and that stuff all the time. It's it's a diff, it's a major difference. Like we all know, well, that. it's a major difference. And they're not keeping him. Like they, there's no way they keep Indiana State can keep him. And I'm, that's no disrespect to the school or the conference or anything. No. There's just no. There's too going to be way too many openings. Um, and and you know he is way too high. He's the Dusty May right now of this. You know, before the tournament started, he's the Dusty May of this season. Like. Speaking of Dusty May, um, Bob Kravitz thinks that he is a good fit at Louisville. I'm not sure I see him leaving Boca Raton for Louisville, but it's the yeah. ACC. Uh, the money will definitely, they know that they won't be able to get him on a budget, so they're going to pay him. Hey, uh, hey, Jim, this is so funny because this is exactly and, – and he may take one of those jobs. I don't know. But but this is exactly what happened with Mark Few every single year for – Kept getting pay raises. <laughs> 15 years or whatever it was that everyone kept saying, oh, oh, he'll leave. Yeah, he's got to leave Gonzaga for blank job or for blank job or for blank job. And every year it was – a you know, a bigger and better school and more money and all of that. And he's still there. And so there are people in the world. I'm not saying Dusty is going to be one of those, but there are people in the world that, that love where they're at and love their situation. And, and you hear people say it all the time, all the money in the world couldn't make me go do this. Well, there are people who actually believe that. And, and I think, I think there's a possibility Dusty's one of those. He's just in, you know, where he lives. Like, you know, where that place is down there. It's, he is in such – it is paradise. It is a – It's in paradise. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I take every opportunity can you, can you to say this. Rant for, can you let me rant for like one second? For like, no, one solid minute. Like Go this, ahead. This is, this is just irritating me. Like I lost sleep over this overnight. The officiating in the Indiana game last night and, – and you can go back and watch all the interviews I do with you, all our shows, everything that you and I do. And I very seldom ever – Officiating. Never, because yeah, I don't never. believe it generally affects the outcome of the game. The officials affected the outcome of the game last night, and I'm not. I'm talking about their inconsistency, not pro or against Indiana. Their the lack of consistency in how they called fouls last night affected the entire game. It changed the way Penn State had to play. It changed the foul situations. It changed everything. It looked, guys. Think they could get away with certain things. It let them know they can't do certain things. And and then when you get to the end of a game and you start calling it differently, you call that foul on Malik Renew on that moving screen towards the end of the game. And and you can go watch a hundred screens throughout the game that are worse than that one. And and I'm going to use that. Ace Baldwin, when he reaches in and knocks the ball away, is probably better at that than any human being I've ever seen. But the foul on Xavier Johnson at the end of the game when he's driving in for that layup, when he – And he has tell, nothing but hand. Hey, we have all uh, – as a player, I can tell you, we've all been in that situation and you try to get ball or whatever. And then once you realize you didn't get the ball, you could see what Ace Baldwin did. He knew he fouled him. So he just said, I, he's, like, he's not getting this ball up. It's not going to be a three-point play. I'm yanking not gonna let his him arm score. down. Exactly. He takes – physically grabs his wrist and takes it down because – he does what you're supposed to do. You're, you're not letting him get a three-point play. He basically intentionally fouls him, and the ref still doesn't call it. That is, If those referees are not reprimanded for that, then there is truly something wrong with the way officials are handled in basketball. And I will sit down with any official, anybody, and let them tell me that game last night was, was called in a way where those guys could be proud of the job they did when they got done. That was embarrassing. Both sides, both ways. It was embarrassing. Yeah, I, I, I wonder. I to get that off my chest. It was it. It irritated me so bad last night. I think every officiating crew should be forced to sit down with an independent party after every game and review their games. Uh, it, it, they you can, want you, you know, want to have, know what a, you want to see a reality show. You want, I've been saying this for years. You know what a great reality show would be in the off season, like after everything's over. So. Tensions are down. Everybody's calmed down a little bit. Get coaches like Tom Izzo or Mike Shashevsky or, you know, get uh, Bruce Pearl would be a fun one. Get those guys, Calipari, 
to sit in a room watching a game film, calls that are made in a game with the officials, with the officials that made the call. Oh, my God. And let those officials have to explain what was going through their brain when they made a certain you call? You got like some explaining to do. Oh man, it, it would be it would be as good as some of those NFL shows that I see where they follow them around all year long. Like you, you, it's a reality show that should happen because the penalty box with Todd Leary, baby. Oh man, that should be a I, I reality. Tell you what. There, hey, you there know was what? another some, foul. How about the foul point, on Anthony? Not... Go ahead. Might be some point in those if we got that thing put together where some of those officials didn't make it out of the room. <laughs> we'd, be, we'd be scrapping. I, it makes me that mad. There was another foul called on Anthony Leal on a three point shot, and I'm like, uh, really? He fouled he, him. He, yep, he fouled he, him. He, he hit his hand. He, no, he hit, he he touched his arm, but was well before the shot. Well, he wasn't even in a shooting motion. I didn't think he he just. He touched yeah, his arm. We might, be talking his... About, we might be talking about a different one, but but Hicks last night got fouled on two different three pointers. He got fouled on both of them, and yeah, that that was going to be my entire talk today about how Indiana, like Indiana's discipline on defense last night. <laughs> they had some plays where even the announcers talked about they were awesome, like they were in they were helping so good, and then they just did they did some of the stupidest fouling on jump shots last night that was going if they lost it was going to absolutely 100 percent be the reason why they got beat in the game because fouling jump shooters when you don't need like there is a difference between being disciplined on defense which includes contesting a shot but you don't you're not there to block the shot like how many times in a season do you see a guy block a, a guy's three-point shot we see it occasionally. Every once in a while, it happens. But I can guarantee you I've seen a lot more guys get fouled on three-pointers than I've seen three-point shots blocked. It's not your job to block their shot. It's your job to make it difficult. And and you that's just lack of discipline. That is, that is lack of defensive discipline. And it's not like I'm calling anybody out. That's an obvious situation. These guys know what they did was wrong. Like, you can't do that. Like, it's just in a, that we had we had some poor defensive fouls last night that was not the officiating they were definite fouls and and we were lucky to I, win I, we we were I I agree with you there I I think Indiana was working very hard on the on the defensive oh, side they were they they knew they knew they had to because that that had been their Achilles heel against Penn State previously not working hard enough shutting them down they could uh, Ace Baldwin Jr. to three of 15 shooting, oh of seven behind the three point line, and Johnson, uh, also one of six, one of 13 behind the three point line for those two. That was massive for Indiana. Gabe Cups, everybody, you know, kind of gets on him a lot. I, I, I even talk about his lack of production sometimes offensively, but last night he is six points. Two three pointers, two big three pointers for yeah. for Indiana, and they, they come at, at at appropriate times. Xavier Johnson only scores four points; he only took five shots. He was not forcing things. Uh, he but he ends up with six rebounds and five assists. So he really affected the game in in another way, and his speed has just helped this team. Uh, you can just see it change a little bit because they're able to get out and run a little bit, uh, which I, we both have talked about how this team is much better when they're in transition. Yeah, and, and you know, hey, going into the game, you could tell the game plan was to figure out a way to stop Ace Baldwin. I mean, and when I say stop, like you're limiting not just his scoring and his production, but he runs the entire show. And so what I thought Indiana did well was they changed the way they handled the ball screens from the first couple of times they played and that they put more pressure in kind of a trapping slash made him go farther out around the screens than in the past. Um, and they made him give the ball up a lot more and, and made the other guys beat him. And, and that – it was an obvious identifiable game plan – Indiana had defensively last night. And and I will tell you, I've been very critical on our shows um, of, of not being able to identify what the game plan was offensively or defensively. And, and it was identifiable last night. They were, they were taking the ball out of Ace Baldwin's hands and doing whatever they could to keep him off balance and, and not, not comfortable out on the court. 
And so that was great. Yes, they, Indiana's defense was the, probably the best for a 40-minute game that I've seen. That's me right after me saying how how I thought <laughs> fouling on jump shots was was atrocious last night. But overall, our defense was, was good for the long run. Um, uh, the production, you and I would not have been complaining about production from Gabe Cups all year long if he was taking standstill three-point shots like he took last night. And so man. I'm not – I'm not getting us off the hook. I'm just saying he definitely played a different game last night and is playing different in the last several ball games. All right. Well, for some reason we lost connection with Jim, but it is time to wrap things up. Todd, I'm not sure. Are you guys doing a post game show tonight? Uh, we are doing a post game show. Even though it's another late night game, uh, we are doing a post game show tonight. So tune in for that. Apologies for no post game show last night, but Jim and Todd will be available after the game on the YouTube page. So check that out. Thanks to everybody who came on the show today. Bob Kravitz, obviously Jim for doing what he does. Todd Leary for your time as always. And they will talk to you tonight. And until then, I guess we will see you on the radio. Thanks for listening to Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for more clips and team coverage of Indiana basketball, football, and more. You can also find full episodes and tons of other content on thehoosier.com. We'll see you next time for another edition of Indiana Sports Beat Radio.